I would like to share a story with you. A 40-year-old man met me last month with this x-ray. He complained of acute onset of cough which suddenly started two months back. The cough was dry in type and it was also associated with some degree of dyspnea. Before this, he had been checked up in multiple centers for his dyspnea without a definite diagnosis. The clinicians said that this x-ray is normal. But this is not normal. The main confusion in this x-ray was the failure to recognize the presence of completely collapsed lobe. This triangular retrocardiac opacity represents completely collapsed left lower lobe. This patient had lower lobe collapse from aspiration of a corn seed. The corn seed was later removed and the patient was fine again. So in this video, I will be discussing on how to identify lung collapse. Welcome to Radio Clinics. If there is only one thing you need to learn about lung collapse in an x-ray, then that is volume loss. You should always search for features of volume loss in an x-ray to identify lung collapse. Lung collapse can be partial collapse or complete collapse. This is the representation of a normal lung. Volume loss of a lung may occur when there is obstruction of the bronchus and loss of aeration of the lung, like in this case, the obstructive collapse. Volume loss of a lung may also occur when the lung is pushed by an effusion or a pleural mass. This is a passive collapse. Volume loss also may occur when there are fibrotic changes in the lung. With fibrosis and scar in the lung, the scar pulls the part of the lung and leads to volume loss. This is called fibrotic collapse or cicatrization collapse. Volume loss of a lung may also occur when there is loss of surfactant. This surfactant lowers the surface tension and helps the lung expand. Just imagine air bubbles in soap water. Air bubbles don't form in plain water. With presence of a surfactant which is soapy water, the air bubble can expand because the soap reduces the surface tension in water. Similarly, surfactant reduces surface tension in our lungs and helps lungs expand. With loss of surfactant, the surface tension is increased and lung collapses. To understand how lung collapses, understand these images. Imagine you have two spherical balloons in a closed jar, which are compressed against each other. There is no any surrounding area to expand. When, now, in this example, when you remove air from the blue balloon, the blue balloon decreases in size and the red balloon expands. This is what you see in the lungs. When the air from the lung goes away, the volume of the lung decreases and the other side expands. So when the volume of the lung decreases, the diaphragm shifts upwards, the mediastinum and trachea shift towards the left side to compensate for the volume loss. This is what is seen in this x-ray. The left lung has completely collapsed and is no longer aerated. The left diaphragm is shifted upwards. So we can see that the gas bubble of the stomach is shifted upwards. The mediastinum and trachea has shifted towards the left side. The collapsed lung has appeared completely opaque. The air in the lungs make the lungs dark on an x-ray. After the air is lost, the lungs appear opaque or white like rest of the body and the bones. So in complete lung collapse, we will see volume loss of the lung, opacity in the lung due to loss of aeration, elevation of the diaphragm in the same side, mediational and tracheal deviation towards the same side and hyperinflation of the opposite lung. What is lower collapse then? The lung is composed of lobes. The right lung has three lobes and the left lung has only two lobes. The lobes are separated by fissures. The oblique fissure on both sides separate the upper lobe from the lower lobe and the horizontal fissure separates the middle lobe from the rest of the lobes. To understand lobar collapse, understand volume loss again. Just remember the same balloons discussed earlier but in this case Focus on the interface in between the balloons because everything is color blue. When the size of the balloon is decreased, 
the interface moved towards the smaller side. Now, if you only focus on the interface, you can see that with collapse of the left sided balloon, the interface moves towards the left side. Imagine the lobes of the lungs as balloons. So, when one lobe is collapsed, then the interface of the lungs, which are fissures, shift towards the collapsed lung. With shifting of the fissures, the hilum are also shifted upwards or downwards towards the collapsed lung. And with loss of aeration, the affected lobe appears opaque. There is one specific concept I would like to explain to you, it's called the seal out sign. I would say this is like the camouflage sign. Look how the toad and land appears to be merged with each other. And if you are at a distance, you can't differentiate the margins of the toad from the margins of the land. Similarly, in an X-ray, if there is opacity, which are lying close towards each other, then we can't see the margins. In this X-ray, the opacity in the lung has similar density with the opacity in the heart. So we can't see the right-sided margin of the heart, but we can well appreciate the left-sided margin. This is called the seal-out sign. This helps us to know where the pathology is lying. For example, if the left heart is silhouetted, the pathology is lying in the lingular segment of left upper lobe. If the left hemidiaphragm is silhouetted, the pathology is lying in the left lower lobe. Considering the features as described above, we can see that in the right upper lobe collapse, the right horizontal fissure is shifted upwards. So, there will be opacity in the right upper zone, fissural shift towards the upside and the hilum is also shifted upwards. These are the features of right upper lobe collapse. In the right middle lobe collapse, the fissures will also be shifted towards the collapse lobe. So, we will be able to see triangular opacity in the right middle zone. There is loss of interface of this opacity with the right hard border. And this is characteristics for the right middle lobe collapse. Remember the camouflage sign. This is because the right middle lobe and the right heart is located close to each other. In the right lower lobe collapse, there will be triangular opacity in the right lower zone. And in the left lower collapse, there will be triangular opacity in the left lower zone with loss of interface of the collapse lung with the diaphragm. The left upper lobe collapse is unique on its own. It appears as an opacity in the left lung, which appears like a veil. Opacity is more towards the hilum and lesser towards the periphery. That's because the left upper lobe occupies most of the left lung vertically. This part is the left upper lobe. So when this part collapses, most of the left lung appears opaque. Sometimes wall of the lung or wall of the lobe may not collapse and only segment or part of the lobe may collapse and this is called segmental collapse. In segmental collapse, we can see only linear structures in the lungs. These linear structures represent collapse of part of the lungs which are smaller than the lobe. These are called segmental or sub-segmental collapse. Thank you.